It is my honor to introduce His Eminence, the Most Reverend Archbishop Pranzo King, D.D., co-founder of the Archbishop Jurisdiction of the West. Welcome, Archbishop Franzo King. I'm, I'm excited at coming to the end of the year. And what's not in that history report is that the church has moved to the marina, to, to Fort Mason, to Marina Boulevard in Building D. And we're on the third floor there and we are being welcomed and hosted by the Magic Theater which is very important for us. We say that we're bringing miracles and theater and magic together. So we're looking for some, some really beautiful things to happen. There we down there close to the water. You know, that's where Jesus introduced him, was introduced in the water. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm uh, just gonna have a few brief words and I would say as much as we've accomplished, and I just want to thank, you know, Carl and, and, and Dr. Scott and some of the other people that have been keeping me updated and informed and allowing me to be a voice for the church because it's so important that we be involved, just not spiritually, but we have to be involved politically, socially, and any department of our lives, as St. John Coltrane would say. And in being a part of this coalition has allowed us to be relevant and significant and some justification for whatever space we're taking up on the planet. And I'm very grateful to that. And I would say to us, there's a scripture that says, be not weary in well doing. And that uh, we would grasp and continue to grasp and grasp firmly on what we've done because to grasp and not grasp firmly is not to grasp at all. Uh, it, it, it seems that uh, we're living in some very trying times, but it also gives a chance for magic and miracles to happen and things that even sometimes is beyond our imaginations, but our dedication to freedom and and justice uh, seems to open up doors that uh, that the enemy would hope that would not only slam, but that they were locked and closed forever. So I'm excited in that sense to be allied with such uh, committed comrades that have great knowledge and have put in great labor with the work. And I would just say, let's not be weary and well doing, let's continue. And if there's anybody that likes to pray, that's good too. But, you know, we say it like this, keep the prayer wheels turning and cold train burning because that anointed sound too can help encourage us and even liberate us, free us and heal us from any lethargy that we're having. We'll find that our energy increases and the stamina that we need to go forward. And somebody- Tommy Avicoli Mecca is a Southern Italian queer songwriter, poet, and activist. He has appeared at many Living Wage Coalition events. He's also a longtime San Francisco tenants rights activist. Welcome Tony Avicoli Mecca. The floor is yours. Two little songs to present tonight. Um, the first one is a rather new song. And um, I've, um, I've been, um, a jazz fan all my life. I grew up with an older brother who introduced me to Coltrane and Miles and Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald and all those folks when I was very young. And um, I've never stopped loving the music. Um, I've only recently during COVID when I had a lot of time because I couldn't leave my apartment, um, I started teaching myself jazz chords on my guitar so that I could get a little closer to actually writing some jazz songs. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna not gonna lie to you and say that I'm there yet, but I'm, go I'm heading in that direction. And I think anybody who's familiar with my old style will see that my style is different, getting different and getting closer to that day when, when I'm hoping my fantasy is to record with a jazz trio or quartet and record my songs. And I, I write ballads, I love, I love jazz ballads. That's my absolute favorite style in the whole world. So I'm gonna to try to do this song and 
let you hear where I'm heading. As I said, I'm on a journey, but I'm not there yet. So this is called Strange Affair with Love. Chemicals in the brain. Chemicals that flow like rain. Chemicals we're head over heels, but sometimes we don't want to feel. He's had a strange affair with love. A very sad affair with love. Love never stays around. He never knows just where love is bound. He spends his days alone. It's true. He never laughs or smiles, he's blue. He struggles every day. He never knows just what people say. Love's got the moon on its side. Takes the stars for a ride. Love's got the arrow and the bow where it aims it. No one knows. He'll never fall in love again. He's very sure his heart will mend. He'll never let it break. He only cares that, that it won't ache. He's got a strange affair. very sad affair with love. Love never stays around. He never knows just where love is bound. Love never stays around. He never knows just why love never stays. We did a show together called A Roof Over My Head, which was about the housing crisis. And um, this was the title song, A Roof Over My Head, which was sung by an 80-something-year-old um, woman who was being evicted. And the, the show focuses around her fight to stay in her home. And this is called um, A Roof Over My Head. Never knew how much I needed it. Place to live where I know I can. Place to fly my thoughts all day And a place to hang my hat, they say Place to live until I'm dead All I need is a roof over my head I watch the years, they just flew by a place to laugh and a place to cry place to bury a cat or two And a place to do the things we do 
Oh, remember what Dorothy said. All I need is a roof over my head. It doesn't have to be a lot of space. I'm not part of the old rat race. Just something underneath my feet to keep me off of the goddamn street. I remember when I was young, a place for songs that had to be sung. A place to toast a brand new year with a lot of joy and a little fear. You can always go home, they said. All I need is a roof over my head. Now I'm just too old to compete as the market turns up the heat. All the vultures with their dough, oh, I wonder if they'll ever know. Someday they may be in my bed. All they'll need is a roof over their head. All I need is a roof over my Something like that. Thank you. Andy Michelle Smallwood, you can call her Mitch, is a second generation San Franciscan. Candy grew up in the Bayview Hunters Point area of San Francisco in the Alice Griffith public housing development of the San Francisco Housing Authority. She's the second oldest of eight kids graduating from Philip Burton High School in 2000. Candy is an alumnus of City College of San Francisco, San Francisco State University, and San Francisco Law School, a housing warrior and advocate. Candy is also an artist, playing music, writing political poetry. Candy believes art is one of the most th important things that we can do for ourselves and our expression. For the past four years, Candy has been playing music with the Brass Liberation Orchestra, a political street brass band that supports social justice causes and actions around the Bay Area. A lover of jazz, Candy has also spent the past three years studying jazz. A storyteller, Candy enjoys telling stories through her music, sharing her experiences and her emotions. Music is in her blood. Local jazz legends, Mary Stallings and Margie Baker, are her relatives and have greatly influenced her love of music. Candy's accompanied by Thomas Busser. Thomas grew up in France and found a new home here in San Francisco. He loves everything about sound and music and writes songs for fun. Welcome Candy Smallwood and Thomas Busser. According to MIT, a living wage is the hourly rate that an individual in a household must earn to support themselves and their family. This includes paying for housing, food, transportation, medical expenses, child care, and other basic necessities. In San Francisco, a living wage for a single person with no kids is $28 an hour. The minimum wage in San Francisco is $16.99 an hour. How do you break the cycle of poverty? How do you live, meet your needs, prepare for unexpected emergencies? How can you save? 
How can someone survive when they make less than a living wage? How can people prosper? If you don't make a living wage, how can you thrive and support your family? Why is our system so broken that there is such a wealth disparity? What's worse is who makes these decisions, who decides what people get paid. They don't struggle to afford rent and basic necessities. They don't live in substandard housing they can barely afford. Why do the wealthy decide to entrap so many people in poverty? Why do we have to fight for something so simple? Why must we fight for justice? economic justice. Let's all get on the same page. We all need a living wage. Let's all get on the same page. We all need a living wage. All we're asking for is some sincerity. Pay us. Fairly. All we're asking for is some sincerity. Pay us. Fairly. Let's all get on the same page. We all need a living wage. Let's all get on the same page. We all need a living wage. Let's all get on the same page. We all need a living wage. Let's all get on the same page. We all need a living wage. Pay us a living wage. Pay us a living wage. Pay us a living wage. They are both longtime members of the Revolutionary Poets Brigade for years under the uh, mentorship and guidance of San Francisco poet laureate Emeritus, someone we very miss, Jack, very much miss, Jack Hirschman. The Revolutionary Poets Brigade is a group of poets in the San Francisco Bay Area dedicated to bringing positive change in the world through the power of poetry. They gather for community readings and actions at any venue, including the streets. Founded in 2009, it calls on all poets to put their powerful words in the services of struggles already in motion. For the last 12 years, it has published an annual anthology of the poetry of revolution, inspired with the passion of the living, provoking the future. Its latest edition is titled storm warning and it is the stage is yours uh, my first poem is justice because it deals with what we're talking about workers strike for health care for insurance for fair living wages people march for human rights for safety for protection from police People rise up against injustice, against slayings by police, exonerated by unconstitutional grand juries. Women and children continue to combat injustice in the workplace and in life. 
unequal wages, violence. It's all the same. Law must prioritize the people and not the working class. And my next is burning Amazon. I think right now our environmental issues are so egregious. And we know when we had fires, just incredible fires recently during the pandemic. So burning Amazon, the Amazon is burning. Loggers and farmers have set fire to the lungs of our world to clear the way for crops and farms. The native Mura tribes are dying, their lives burning away with the trees and Brazil nuts, the ferns and animals. They seek out the arsonists with guns to stop the fires, but it is not their way to destroy, but to save. The native tribes do not shoot, but walk quietly. They walk the way of the forest, the way of nature, as they have learned from the beginning of time to walk with earth under the stars, under the moon and sun as one being, one earth. One. We meet clinging to the cliff at the edge of the world after a long journey. You are here. You have survived. I have enormous respect for you for that accomplishment. You are clever, fast, persistent, enduring, wily. The simple fact that you're alive is proof you needed to be in order to survive through this blood-soaked mess and chaos. As any glance at history will demonstrate, they keep killing each other every day, almost anywhere we look, bedlam and mayhem. And they've been doing that since as far back as anybody chooses to remember or to forget since time never began. While in the thick of it all, you and I, direct descendants of the long stream of life back through the first pre-humans and before that to whatever form we took way back when, when, when you and I, you and I have somehow made it through all this chaos and murder together. It's been quite a journey, and it hasn't been easy. So it's a victory for us all. We have arrived at this place. We are the winners, the survivors. But where do we go from here? A composer and music musician who was born and raised in Mexico from an early age, Diego taught himself to play several instruments, concentrating on drum and guitars. For years, he played drums with different groups in jazz festivals throughout Mexico. Now he focuses on guitar, and he has written and composed many gypsy guitar melodies. I have the pleasure of introducing Diego Sardinetta. Thank you. Buenas noches, feliz Navidad antes todos.
Next is Alice Rogoff. She's a recipient of the Culture Equity Individual Literary Commission from San Francisco Arts Commission for poems about San Francisco women labor organizers. She's a Poets 11 winner in the Friends of the Library contest and won first and second prizes in the 2014 Pacific Media Workers Guild Freelance Journalism Award in the Creative Writing Poetry category. And if that isn't, isn't enough, she's published two books of poetry, Mural and Bargewood, a, a member of the Communication Workers of America and a delegate to the San Francisco Labor Council on behalf of the Coalition of Labor Union Women. She's the Labor Fest, uh, she is in the Labor Fest Writers Anthology giving voice. Please welcome Alice Rogoff. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I also have a new book, uh, Painting the Cat's Vision. This is called When We Were Together. We went to hear jazz. Bajon's was painted black at first, then painted red, and to the meat market coffee house was changed from beige to pink. Small businesses that allowed homeless people around their edges they not being different, a jazz musician, poets, and street people merging together, Bob Kaufman wandering into Bajos to whisper poems, both black and red, and labor too. The Poets Union met at Bajos, 20 poets, each with a tune. Was it chaos or was that jazz? It was jazz. Paul Robeson's voice. I am hearing the disappeared voice of Paul Robeson singing Water Boy, calls on a chain gang in the hot south. I am hearing the disappearing islands covered with lapping rising waters, heavy hurricanes in New Orleans. Paul Robeson changing the words of Old Man River. Paul Robeson for global unity, global warming getting hotter. A laborer in the hot sun in Flint, Michigan, a farm worker in Watsonville needing water in a pandemic. Paul Robeson calls to a young prisoner, too young, on a hot day, too hot. Red flag warnings. And thank you very much and happy holidays, everyone. Bravo. Bravo. Bravo.